Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and this is another one of those lessons that was kind of by request. Um, I had somebody asking me if I could do some videos basically where just kind of show you how to play something rather than uh, getting really heavily into the music theory side of things. So what I'll do today is show you a quite a useful little lick, nice little exercise, um, but I will explain the theory behind it. If you're new to music uh, theory, don't worry. If you don't understand the theory behind it, just take the lick for what it is, learn how to play it, use it in your own playing. Um, and as you start to study music theory later on, it'll start to make sense as to why we're playing the notes that we are and, and, and how they all, all relate to each other. This is one of those exercises that I call a rut buster. This is kind of to get you out of a rut in your playing. There's something I've, I've found is that sometimes people will be studying something, they'll be practicing a particular thing and then it kind of becomes all, all encompassing because they've, they've studied it so much it kind of becomes a really big part of the playing so like to the detriment of, uh, of other styles or techniques or whatever and this is a, a one that I kind of came up with to get you out of playing sequential notes and getting more into like an arpeggio type of approach in music there's three uh, sort of aspects really that we think about as guitar players there's scales chords and arpeggios and chords and arpeggios are quite closely linked basically a chord is a series of notes played together and an arpeggio is a series of notes played sequentially but there's bigger gaps between the notes in a chord or an arpeggio than there are on a scale and what i've seen in the past is people get into learning scales and they just do lots of practice routines playing through scales and get into a very like sequential kind of mindset and then that comes over in the soloing so this exercise kind of gets you out of that rut of thinking in scales and it's very very arpeggio based okay so oh uh, guitar of the day today is my fender usa standard strat um going at the pv valve king on the dirty channel <laughs> like that. Okay so onto the lick in question I'll play it through once a uh, moderate sort of speed and then kind of break it down for you and show you how it's played. This is in the key of G major and we're going to start off basically with D major arpeggio which is D, F sharp and A and we're going to play that with a D on the fifth fret on the fifth string, F sharp and fourth fret on the fourth string, and an A at the seventh fret on the fourth string. Then we're going to move up to a G major arpeggio, which is basically taking the same shape and just moving it up by one string. So we start off with a G at the fifth fret on fourth string, up to a B at the fourth fret on the third string and then a D at the 7th fret on the 3rd string. Next up is a C major arpeggio and we're going to start off here with a C at the 5th fret on the 3rd string, an E at the 5th fret on the 2nd string and I find it easiest to play this by just barring the two strings with my first finger and then we play a G at the 8th fret on 2nd string. Next we're going to play an F sharp diminished uh, arpeggio, so that's an F sharp at the 7th fret on 2nd string, an A at the 5th fret on 1st string, and a C at the 8th fret on 1st string. So let's put those four arpeggios together and get this. So that's basically the first half of the, the lick. It's played evenly just in, in triplets, so one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. the second section and we start with a slide we're going to go up from the 8th fret on the 1st string to the 10th fret down to the 8th fret again 
down to the seventh fret, down to the eighth fret on the second string, ninth fret on the third string, tenth fret on the fourth string. playing there you can think of that actually as a C major 9 arpeggio so that's the ninth degree there the D and then we just go down from a C to a B to a G to an E to a C and to finish the lick off we're basically going to be playing a F sharp diminished arpeggio but I'm going to stick in one extra note think of it like a passing note we're going to put in a B here, so we we'll finish that C major 9 arpeggio, the C at the 10th fret on the 4th string, going to go down to the B at the 9th fret on the 4th string, down to an A at the 7th fret on the 4th string, down to an F sharp at the 9th fret on the 5th string. Now let's just play through what we've got for that second section so far. the last beat we're going to go up from the F sharp here at the 9th fret on the 5th string to the G at the 10th uh, fret on the 5th string and we're going to sustain that for the entire beat so we'll get okay so let's just play that lick through in its entirety So like I said at the start, if you understand music theory, you will understand those uh, those arpeggios, how they're constructed, why they're constructed the way they are, and how they relate back to the key that we're playing in, which is the key G major. If you're not a music theorist, there's still something there that you can take away and learn to play. And if you're ever playing and you know that you're in the key of G major, then, then that will work. So treat it as a theory exercise, treat it as a playing exercise, treat it as a um, timekeeping exercise as well, because like I say, it's all, apart from that last beat which sustains the full quarter note, it's all played in triplets, so it's one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, one, two, yeah, like that. Practice it, have fun with it, come up with your own variations. If you understand the theory and you, you know what key you're playing in, you know what notes there are available in the key of G major. If you need some help, use Fat Fish. That'll show you all the notes of the uh, of the G major scale, or well, uh, any scale, on the fingerboard. Can show you what's at your disposal. And it gets you out of playing in scale boxes. We're kind of moving around the neck quite a bit here. But we're not con confining ourselves to uh, to boxes, which is which is good. Playing in boxes is, is another rut that it's quite easy to uh, to get into. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please click like, please subscribe down there. If you've got a question or suggestion for a future video, or something that you want me to cover, then if you go here, fill in the form, send your question in, I'll try and get around to answering it in a future video. Leave a comment on the video if you want, but to be honest, YouTube's a bit rubbish at letting me know when people have commented on videos, so often questions left in the comment section uh, go unseen using that forms a lot more of a uh, reliable way of getting in touch with me. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.